These are the tips that I would use, I would wanna know if I were a medical student trying to match into a hard medical specialty. In this video, we're going over six tips to help medical students match into competitive specialties. Let's go. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach, I am a first year ASOPers oculoplastic surgery fellow. And on the channel, we focus on everything about medical school, residency, ophthalmology, oculoplastics fellowship, day in the lifestyle stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below. In today's video, I wanna go over six tips and hang around till the end because the last one's a bonus tip and what I think is probably one of the most important tips that you can do if you're looking to match into a competitive medical specialty out of medical school. Medical school is becoming ever more competitive year by year. It is seen as a very secure job with prestige and a lot of respect. And overall, it is just a good profession, one of the most solid professions in our society today. With that, it is becoming more and more competitive. One of the things that tends to drive that is the lifestyle of the specialty, the compensation of the specialty, the amount of fulfillment that you get, and the amount of fun that you just are able to have within that specialty. If you're in medical school and you're looking to match into one of these really competitive medical specialties, take some of these tips into account and the sooner you implement them, the sooner you realize them, and the sooner you start focusing on them within medical school, the better chance you'll have of matching into a competitive specialty. So as we go through the list in progressive order, these will become what I think are the more important things to do as a medical student looking to match into a medical specialty. So the first one to get it out of the way is to do well on the grades, do well on the standardized testing, and do well on the clinical rotations. With medical schools going to pass-fail systems now, it's harder to really stand out with your class ranking and your grades alone. And now even step one being a pass-fail test makes that sort of an obsolete way of screening medical students for competitive specialties. That puts more stress and more emphasis on step two CK, which is probably, in my opinion, a better test of clinical reasoning ability. And so that becomes a more competitive test. So that's one thing you definitely wanna focus on. Doing well on the clinical rotations is something that should not be underestimated. So don't slack on the clinical rotations and try to get honors in those rotations, especially the ones like internal medicine, general surgery rotations, and the subspecialty that you were trying to match into, you definitely wanna to try to get honors, high pass, that kind of thing. This can vary a lot from medical school to medical school on how those are given out and what percentage of medical students get a high pass or an honors on their clinical rotations. But do your best to try to get into the higher echelon of medical students in your clinical rotations. So work hard, don't complain, show up on time and seem interested. Those are the best ways to do well on those clinical rotations. That dovetails into the second tip and that's to do well on your audition rotations or your away rotations. If the specialty you're trying to match into allows you to do away rotations or audition rotations or even just rotations at your medical school in that specialty, so say you wanna go into dermatology and you're able to do a rotation at your home medical school's uh, dermatology program and you're gonna rotate with them, make sure that you're doing a lot of reading beforehand that you look into the patients that you're gonna be seeing, have an idea about what's going on. Don't slack off on those rotations because a lot of times medical students that aren't interested in going into that field use those rotations as kind of a break or as a way to kind of just slack off and take it easy. But if you wanna go into that specialty, you really need to work hard on those audition rotations. And a lot of times these really competitive fields, the residents are so busy that they might not even seem like they're that interested or they have a lot of time to kind of take with you. And it can, you can, you And you can kind of misconstrue that as nobody's really paying attention to me, so I don't really need to work hard, but they are noticing, they are picking up on these things. So definitely bust your butt on these away rotations, these audition rotations. If it isn't a away rotation where you're going somewhere else, make sure that you build up a little base knowledge and a base skill set before you go do an away rotation somewhere. So it's a good idea to do some rotations at your home program before you go somewhere else and try to show your skills, show your knowledge, and kind of sell yourself at these away uh, programs where you're doing rotations. When I wanted to match into ophthalmology, I did two away rotations and I had done multiple rotations at my home program before I went and did these away rotations. So I knew what I was doing a little bit when I went to do them. The third recommendation is in terms of research, and I think everybody knows in medical school, if you're gonna match into a competitive specialty, whether it's dermatology, plastic surgery, ophthalmology, urology, ENT, any of these things, any of these competitive specialties, you gotta do research. And obviously it's gonna help to do research in that. 
that field. But what I would say, if you're not sure about exactly which medical specialty you want to go into, maybe you're considering a few different ones, or maybe even one specialty that's pretty competitive and one that's not so competitive, I would say to gear the research and to gear the application a little more toward the competitive specialty. And then if you decide to go into the less competitive specialty, it's easier to fall back on that than trying to throw something together at the end to match into a competitive specialty at the last minute. So gear your application, gear your research, gear your kind of focus to matching into that competitive, especially even if you're not sure you want to go into it initially. For research, what that means is trying to get with some people that do research in that field and try to get involved with projects, try to get a case report, try to publish something, even if it's just a case report. Be working on something if you're not able to publish, have something that you can talk about in terms of research. It just shows dedication to the field and dedication to kind of advancing medicine as a whole. So definitely do the research, try to do it within that field. And if you can, if you're deciding between two specialties, go with the more competitive specialty. It's easier, it's gonna be easier on the long run to move back to a less competitive specialty than move up to a more competitive one last minute. The fourth recommendation is in terms of recommendation letters, realize you are gonna need recommendation letters when you're applying for residency, when you're applying for these competitive specialties. So try to identify people within the field, within the department of the specialty that you wanna match into at your home program early on, as early as you can. So whether that means doing research with faculty that could potentially write you a good letter, identify these people that might be good people to write you a letter. Now, a few of the letters are gonna have to come from certain people like your medical school dean or maybe somebody on an internal medicine rotation, but find somebody within the specialty, whether it's if you're wanting to go into urology, urology attending or an ophthalmology, an ophthalmology attending, find somebody who can write you a good letter. What helps in this regard is to find somebody who is pretty well known within the field and that may not be the case at every program or you know at every department may not have somebody that's super well known. The people with more connections are gonna be able to give you a better recommendation letter because you'll realize as you move through medicine, these things are smaller and smaller groups of people as you become more subspecialized that tend to just know each other and be good friends. And so it's really just them writing a letter of recommendation to people that they know already or their friends. And so people with a broader network, people who are well known within that subspecialty or that specialty are gonna have more say, gonna have more pull in helping you to match into a competitive specialty. So identify people who could potentially write you a letter that are most well known within the field. So don't pick, you know, a very young faculty member who is not well known within the field, whose word may not go as far as somebody who's been practicing for 30 years and knows everybody within the field, goes to all the meetings and everybody knows that person. Realize early on the importance of having a broad network and people that can help plug you into that network and try to provide some value to that person, whether it be helping them with research or at least working in their clinic and trying to learn and seem interested and trying to show that you could be a valuable asset to people. It's a lot easier to write a letter of recommendation for someone if you actually believe that they would be a good candidate. You want them to know, you want them to have a sort of idea of your work ethic, your ability, so that they can write you a good letter. So try to work with that person early on, uh, as early as you can within medical school. The last tip I have is to try to think of yourself from the point of view of not only the residency that's going to be accepting you into the competitive specialty, but also to the people that are going to help you, whether that be your letter writers or people that can kind of help plug you into that network I talked about. View yourself as an asset to that person. So if you were sitting in their shoes, why would they want to take you? What are you going to offer? So, so try to view yourself as a net positive versus a net negative. So what I mean by that is if this person's looking at you, are you going to be a net negative on being a trainee? So are they going to have to put more time and energy into training you? Are you going to be somebody who is going to come and be ready to work and provide more value than you are taking away from them. So try to not just show up thinking that I'm here for you to teach me. Try to view it as what can I offer to this person or to this program or to this department that would make them almost need me in their program. So what other skills do you have? What can you offer? What can you do to kind of make their lives better, make their lives easier and provide something to them? It's all about what value you can bring to them. If you can show a program, if you can show a department that you are an invaluable asset, then you become someone that they not only 
would consider, but that they're going to want to bring into their department. That's going to be a huge benefit into helping you match into a competitive specialty. This is where kind of side interests, side hobbies that can dovetail themselves into medicine can come into play. So for me, applying to a competitive specialty like oculoplastic surgery, having some background in instrument design and development, surgical instrument design was a huge selling point, I think, that helped me not only have more interesting interviews, but it also helped me be a little more appealing to programs, knowing that I could come in and potentially potentially help them create instruments uh, for surgical procedures that they would want to do. So be a net positive, be a value add to a program, and that's going to be a huge help to you matching into a competitive specialty. Always look at it from the other person's point of view. What value can you bring to them, not what you can just take from the special. Guys, these are six tips to help you match into competitive specialty. This really all just ties back into working your butt off, doing well, meeting people, putting yourself out there, and offering something to the specialty. It's not complicated. It's simple. It doesn't mean it's easy, but it is simple. These are the tips that I would use. I would want to know if I were a medical student trying to match into a hard medical specialty. I hope this helped. I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, leave a like on the video. I would appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.